Hi, it is 12 noon here in San Francisco, California. This is Julie Ward coming to you from uh, Alamo Square, the park that is across the street from where I live. And uh, behind me, you can see the trees and probably a little bit of the city uh, in the background. So um, I'm calling this one Evangelicals because I have a little bit of knowledge about uh, the evangelical community, having grown up in uh, a family of evangelicals, and I went to private schools that were evangelical private schools uh, during my uh, grade school, all the way up into the middle of my junior year, many of them actually, throughout, throughout the Midwest and throughout the country. Uh, my parents moved around a lot. So, um, I have a little bit of knowledge about the way that they think, how they operate throughout the world, uh, how they feel, um, the, the way that they look at the world, the way that they articulate themselves. Um, I've got firsthand knowledge. And one of the things that I've noticed about many podcasters uh, in this country is that when they do talk about evangelicals, they don't really, they really just kind of, it's almost like they just make fun of them, and then the conversation just kind of ends there. So what I was hoping to do was, was, was do it in a way that would, could sort of be a little bit more educational to the community and to the country at large, um, and to my and to my, you know, few followers that I have out there that that might care about something like this. So ultimately, what evangelicals believe is that you have to accept Jesus Christ into your heart in order to go to heaven. So unlike the Catholic faith, where you do penance and you you ask the priest to to listen to your sins and and you know there's there's a you know that that kind of ritualistic stuff evangelicals it's a one-stop shop you know you accept Christ into your heart and then you follow the teachings of the Bible and the Bible according to evangelicals is like the end-all be-all it is like the absolute truth of everything there there is no uh, they, they take the Bible very, very literally. Um, it's, a, it's a very literal <laughs> uh, way of life for them. The, and it's always the Bible. Sorry about moving around so much, but there's people sunbathing, and I, I thought I had some privacy, but I'm just going to move over a little bit more. Okay, so they, um, it's really hot out, by the way. So that's what they believe. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, their spiritual beliefs. So their spiritual belief is that, you know, you accept Jesus Christ into your heart and then it's a one-stop shop and then you get to heaven. So he cleanses you of your sins. You follow the teachings of the Bible. You, you immerse yourself in the actual literal teachings of the Bible. And uh, as long as you have Jesus Christ into your heart and you name him as, and God and the teachings of the Bible as the number one way to navigate throughout this world, then you will go to heaven. Then you die. When you die, you will go to heaven. And so many evangelicals, and my mother was especially like this, the narcissist, was always talking about how she couldn't wait to to go to heaven, which in my interpretive mind, it was like, well, basically then you can't wait to die, which seemed kind of morbid and kind of macabre, (laughs) if you think about it. Someone who's always talking about how they can't wait to die, that seems kind of kind of weird. So uh, that's how I grew up though. So, um, so spiritually it's, it's pretty simple. You know, uh, there's three, three factions of the evangelical spirit world, which is God, the father, Jesus, the son, and then the Holy spirit. And they use the Holy spirit as a way to interpret situations. So whereas you and I as critical thinkers and understanding that we have a fight or flight mechanism within us that tells us we're in when we're in a bad situation that we're not sure of our intuition kicks up and tells us to to get the hell out of that situation well evangelicals will attribute that inborn intuition 
they will attribute it to the Holy Spirit. They will say, oh, the Holy Spirit was intuitive in me and gave me the signal to, you know, to be safe or whatever. So spiritually, it's, it seems pretty simple. Um, there's really nothing complicated about their spiritual uh, it's, um, b- belief system. It's, it's almost infantile, you know, in a way. There's no complexity. There's no critical, there's no room for critical thought. It's just, it's very black and white. You either are or you aren't. You either have Jesus Christ in your heart or you don't. Um, And so, and if you don't, then you will probably, you're going to go to hell. (laughs) And you'll, you'll suffer and you'll probably suffer on this planet too. Another like more complex, maybe this is a little bit more complex, but another more complex, uh, definition of of evangelicals definition of god is that god is this you know all encompassing loving man in the sky he's kind of like santa claus um in fact the other day when i was on the f market there was an old guy that looked exactly like santa claus and he was wearing a pin on his lapel that said god is good and i was like well if that just doesn't define it right there i don't know what does so evangelicals often look at god like santa claus he's often unseen he's very kindly he's like got the twinkle in his blue eyes uh he's got the the long flowing silky hair and and he's like he's super kind and he's very giving and benevolent and all this stuff and he's a loving god and he wants to cherish his children but unfortunately, if you don't believe in evangelical Christianity, well, unfortunately, God's hands are just tied and he just, he wants to help you. He's reaching out. He's saying, why won't you, why won't you let me into your heart? Why won't you let me into my, into, into your life so that I can be your all encompassing, loving, benevolent Santa Claus father. But gosh, you don't believe in me. So how can I help you? That kind of thing. So that's that's sort of their definition of God, you know. So it's always this kind of like smug condescension when someone's like, "Well, I don't I'm not a Christian. I don't believe in that." And it's like, "Oh, well that's unfortunate for you because God really wants to love you and really wants to make sure that you you don't get sent into the fiery pits of hell and and torture and torment <laughs> and have your limbs ripped from your body and experience, you know, hellfire and brimstone. That's really unfortunate because God wants to save you from that, but you're just not letting him. So, so it, again, it goes back into my wheelhouse, which is more about like the psychological mechanisms and, and psyops that the family dynamic play on the people, which is, which is the fear tactics, um, which, and then also that it always comes back to blaming the victim. It's like, Oh, well, I was victimized in life and I'm not a Christian. Oh, well, I guess it's your fault because you don't believe in God or you don't have God in your life and you haven't accepted Jesus Christ into your heart. You poor, tortured soul. It's your fault. So, again, going back to victim blaming mode, you know, victim blaming. It's the same concept of like, well, you know, that girl wouldn't have gotten raped if she hadn't worn that short skirt. You know, it's a very, like I said in the beginning, it's very simplistic. It's very, um, it's very black and white. Um, not a lot of room for critical thought. Just not a lot of room for um, background scenarios or, or, or really just like teachable moments. There's nothing like that. It's just very, very stark and very, um, you know, <laughs> very black and white. So culturally... Uh, evangelicals really love the uniform. Anybody in uniform, they just go absolutely gaga for it. They just go, you know, they practically start, you know, drooling at the mouth and they just become these like, you know, puddles of emotion. So anyone in uniform, the police, firemen, military, anybody in uniform is always just this, you know, this, 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 you know, amazing person that we should practically you know that should be hero worshipped and and all this stuff so so culturally that's how they have that's how they think uh when it comes to things like uh the you know the the systemic abuse and 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 targeting of the black and brown community by the police they're kind of they're kind of like you know they don't really 
they don't really have an opinion about it. They don't really get into it. And it's always kind of like muttered under their breath. Well, they must have done something to deserve to be shot in the face by a police. You know, that kid who stole that pack of Skittles and was shot in the face, you know, by the police or beaten down by the police, you know, he shouldn't have been stealing that pack of Skittles because you don't know what else he's capable of, that kind of thing. So they justify, you know, massive... Uh, massive abuse by the system and by empire and by the, the, the militarized police state that our country is now under, they justify it, um, you know, uh, re on the regular, pretty, pretty much all the time. There's always justification. I'll never, ever forget the, the time when my mom went through, you know, an hour-long description of how, of how she justified Trayvon's Martin murder in Florida by George Zimmerman back a few years ago, and I was completely appalled. Okay, so don't think that I wasn't. I'm just explaining to you the mind of an evangelical. So they justify, um, they justify killing and they justify uh, uh, um, targeting of certain communities. And I believe that this goes back to what it talks about in the Bible, where in the Bible, in certain parts of the Bible, it talks about how the earth will be cleansed. So you know, we all know that ethnic cleansing is, is an atrocious, horrific uh, crime against humanity. And the UN itself has stood up and said, you know, this, these countries and these fascist states and these, you know, dictatorships that, that participate in ethnic cleansing um, are, you know, they're on our shit list. And so evangelicals ultimately are into it. They're, they're supportive of ethnic cleansing. So this is where I segue into their political motivations and their political beliefs. So evangelicals believe that Israel, the state of Israel, or the nation of Israel, is the chosen nation of God. And that everybody who comes from Israel, every Jew on the planet, uh, that had, is a direct descendant of Abraham's God. And that not, not only is it like through a political and spiritual belief system, but they actually literally believe, evangelicals literally believe that Jews have God's DNA within them, within their body. They actually believe that Jews have, the, have God's DNA in them. So they, they look at the Jewish people and, you know, they look at all Jewish people across the board as the chosen ones, the ones that will automatically go to heaven, the ones that when the rapture comes, they will be automatically taken up into heaven. Uh, Jews, in their opinion, do not need to, well, in their facts, in their facts, they, they believe that Jews do not have to accept Jesus Christ into their heart and into their lives and accept him as Lord and Savior because Jews are already the chosen one. So, if you, so evangelicals break down the Jewish community into four different types of Jews. So the Jews that they, that they absolutely love and cherish and are supportive of and would give all of their money to and all of their time and energy and everything, they would take, evangelicals would, would give up every personal possession of theirs to these types of Jews. The Jews that believe in the one state solution, the one state, the one nation of Israel. The Jews that, that continue to oppress and mar marginalize the Palestinian people. Um, so they are supportive of that and they would, they are absolutely in line with that. They believe in the one state solution. In fact, they would go so, evangelicals would go so far as to say the 1948 treaty between, um, Israel and Palestine, once that was signed, that we saw a lot of corruption and a lot of, 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 uh, immorality take place on the planet that suddenly after the 1948, uh, treaty was signed, evangelicals will say, well, you know, that's when we started to see the downfall of society, the moral corruption of society, because the nation of Israel was no longer pure and on its own. It was a two-state now, and it had to share it with these dirty Palestinians. <laughs> so that's what, that's evangelical uh, Christian's viewpoint of the Jews who believe in the one-state solution, the ones who are supportive of Netanyahu's a continued oppression and illegal occupation of Palestinian land. Uh, that's the, the evangelicals are the first in line to, to support Netanyahu. Um, 
they're completely okay with the billions and billions of dollars that the United States gives to Israel so that they can have um, priv uh, a public health care system for their people, free education for their college students, affordable housing, clean water, all the things that we're missing here in this country. Uh, the evangelicals don't care about that. You know, as long as Israel has it, Israel, which is the which is the pure chosen nation that God Himself has ordained, then they're okay with that. So that's the first kind of Jew, the Jew that believes in the one one state, the one nation of Israel. The second kind of Jew is the Jew that is redeemable, and they're the Jews for Jesus. So these are the Jews that are, you know, they, they grew up, they, they knew that they were Jewish. Maybe they had a grandmother or a distant relative that practiced a lot of uh, the Jewish holidays and, and, you know, and paid attention to, to some of the Jewish uh, religious um, teachings and followed some of the principles and things like that. But they themselves grew up to be fairly secular and fairly modern, and they just kind of, you know... It's kind of like a lot of us who grew up in sort of like, um, you know, uh, religious households. We kind of like, you know, we went to college and we got, an, we got a critical thinking education and we decided on our own when it was time that we were just going to be, you know, just like more scientific minded or logical minded. And we were not going to look so much at, at the nebulous spirituality of the world, but more about just like connecting with human beings, you know and just following sort of what I call the golden rule principle, which is, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So, so those are the secular Jews out there that they have an understanding of the concept of their Jewish heritage, but they choose to go away from it. But at some point in their life, they became involved with an evangelical Christian. Maybe they dated one, maybe they became really good friends with one, and they converted to evangelical Christianity. So they accepted Jesus into their heart, they became quote unquote born again, and they went back to their original, uh, you know, inborn connection, DNA rela relation to God. And so those are the redeemable Jews that evangelical Christians will get behind and will support. They're often called Jews for Jesus. There's a whole like sect of them out there in this country. Okay, so those, that's the second type of Jew that evangelicals are are you know sort of supportive from. But it takes a little work to convert them to to Christianity and then to enlighten them on their own privilege. So the third type of Jew is the Jew that evangelicals are absolutely disgusted with and these are the ones that you know have like they they are they're the producers in a lot of the Hollywood movies they're the directors they have a they have a strong influence in the Hollywood community and in the entertainment community um, you would also say that they have evangelicals are really dismissive dismissive of and critical of you know highly um, influential Jewish people like people who are lawyers or uh, people who've chosen to go the scientific way and maybe they're doctors you know these are the people that the evangelical these are the, the types of Jews that the evangelical community is is uh, against um, because they have completely 100% turned their back on their on their um, uh, connection to God. So remember, evangelicals actually do believe that Jewish people have God's DNA in them. So they can do no wrong. They will automatically go to heaven. So it's very infuriating to an evangelical when they see a Jewish person go, yeah, I don't really believe in that. <laughs> I don't believe in that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to invest in it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to acknowledge it. I believe in the Israel two-state solution. Um, you know, I believe that Israel and Palestine should have a two-state solution. I don't believe in the rapture. I don't believe in the second coming of Christ. That's all bullshit. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm over here doing my thing in Hollywood or I'm a lawyer or I'm a doctor and I'm successful and I don't need this bullshit and I don't need God and I just, I live my own life and that's magical thinking and no. <laughs> Evangelicals hate that. They feel, they feel, they, they actually feel personally 
and tragically offended by that. And they feel a deep sense of anger and a deep sense of, of resentment towards those people because here they are gifted, here these people are, these, these, these chosen golden children of God. You know, the, the God's golden children, the, the, the ones that in God's eyes are the most precious on the planet, and they're simply turning their back on him. And, and for an evangelical to witness a Jewish person literally say, I believe in the two-state solution, I don't believe in this ma magical thinking bullshit, I don't believe that Jewish people are the chosen people of God, is infuriating and heartbreaking at the same time to an evangelical. Because, as a side note, uh, emotionally evangelical uh, Christians are extremely sentimental extremely sentimental they put sentiment in things and they and so when they want to get back at you they do uh, things that are sentimental to them for instance like when I went to go visit my evangelical mother a few years ago I looked through all the photo albums and every single photo of me as a child, as a baby, with my father and with the family, it was all gone. Somebody had gone into each and every photo album and had ripped my picture out, and there was nothing to indicate that I even existed. In her mind, you know, there, that was a very sentimental thing, and that she, so she knew that it would... Well, obviously, it did hurt my feelings, of course, but the sentimentality behind it and the, and the, the, the effect that she wanted to have on me uh, she wanted to hit me on a sentimental level. So they're very sentimental. And so, and then the fourth type of Jew that I would say that the evangelicals despise. Okay. So the third one, which is the one that's like in Hollywood and very successful and, you know, should appreciate their, 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 their chosen status in God's eyes as the golden children this is heartbreaking and infuriating to them, of course. But the fourth type of Jew is the one that actually, that, that actually just infuriates the evangelical to the point of irrational anger. So in the Bible, there's a quote that says something like, God will take his children who are, who don't believe in, you know, in him and in the system that set up it set up in place to to keep the Jews as the golden children or whatever that he will take them in his mouth and he will spew them out like vomit well that is how the evangelical Christians think of this next this fourth version of a Jewish person that I'm going to tell you and I actually know per people like per personally uh I know a filmmaker and his wife are, are these, these people that I'm about ready to describe. To describe. So these are the people that um, believe in the Israel two-state solution. They believe in the BDS movement, which is the boycott, divest, and sanctioning of Israeli products, um, which is a nonviolent form of protest against Israel's illegal occupation of Palestinian land. Uh, they support that. They support the two-state solution. They think Palestinians should have just as much rights as, as Isra Israelis do. They don't fall prey to Netanyahu's um, whining and, and um, uh, attacks against the Palestinian uh, people. They don't believe it. They don't support it. And yet, they follow the practices of the Jewish religion to a T. So they... You know, they wear the, the certain clothing at a certain time of year. They eat the, they eat the certain types of food that they, that they have to eat during certain religious holidays. And they um, absorb the culture and they believe in, and, and they follow the practices and they, and they are Jewish people. But they don't believe politically and emotionally and culturally, they don't believe in the two-state solution. So what you have are the, the first set of evangelicals, which are the ones that, or the first state of Jews, which is the ones that the evangelicals absolutely love, which are the ones that believe in the one-state solution. They follow the practices of, of Jewish law. They follow the religion. They follow all of the, the, the pretexts and all of that stuff. They follow it to the letter, and evangelicals are super supportive of that. But within, mixed in with that community, are all the same people that are following all of the laws and the religions and the behavior and the food and all this stuff, but they believe in the two-state solution. So evangelicals hate that this, the, these last types of Christians because, or these last types of Jews because they, they corrupt and infiltrate into the purity of, of the ones that, um, that, that follow you know, the, the way that they're supposed to be as the chosen people of God. So 
as an evangelical, when you adopt Christ into your heart and you become quote unquote born again, then you become adopted into the family of those chosen people. So you're good to go. So, so you're set. You can, um, you know, you can, you can be an evangelical and you can do all the things that, you know, Christ warned of, which is, you know, don't hate your neighbor, don't be an asshole and all that stuff. But you're good because you've got Christ in your heart and you're going to go straight to heaven anyway. So the next thing that I wanted to talk about, too, was the, the rapture on, and how that applies to uh, Israel as a one state uh, solution. So evangelicals believe that the nation of Israel or in that part of the world is where the rapture will take place. They believe that the rapture is actually coming. And so what's interesting and what's, what's something that people should note here in this country is that we have a government here in this country, the United States government, is just riddled and filled with, with those who claim to be evangelicals. Now, do I really believe that Betsy DeVos is an evangelical uh, Christian or that Ben Carson is? Or do I believe that they're saying they are so that they can manipulate the infantile, easy to manipulate even evangelical Christians that do believe in the rapture and do believe in the one state solution in this country? So I don't know. That's, a, that's an open, open-ended question. That's something that, that you would have to do more discovery about the Betsy DeVosses and her, uh, I think it's her brother or her brother-in-law that runs uh, Blackwater, which is the uh, which is the private security firm that rousted out a whole bunch of victims of Hurricane Katrina. I mean, they're an oppressive uh, private security firm that is the equivalent of the SS. So the SS was the private security firm that Nazi Germany uh, hired to um, gather. Uh, Jewish people before they were sent, you know, and send them to the concentration camps. That's the equivalent of, of, um, Blackwater. Okay. And so Betsy DeVos, who's our secretary of education, her brother or her brother-in-law, uh, Prince, his last name is Prince, uh, runs Blackwater. So that's, that's something that you should look into and, and really think about. So, also, Ben Carson, you know, he claims that he's evangelical Christian as well. So all these people believe in the one-state solution. They, be- they apparently believe in the rapture. So what happens in the rapture is, you know, there will come a time that evangelicals believe that Christ will come back on a golden chariot. Now, when I say that evangelicals literally believe in the Bible. It's it's like 99% literal. But there are some critical thinking evangelicals out there that will say, well, maybe it won't be an actual golden chariot that comes from the sky, but maybe it will be a really advanced uh, military plane or some kind of weaponry, you know. And so, and then right after this, this passage in the Bible that talks about how Christ is going to come down on the golden chariot and it talks about how he's going to cleanse the earth. So that's ethnic cleansing. Ethnic cleansing, which is, you know, a crime against humanity, evangelicals are all about it. They're all for it. They're all for ethnic cleansing. I have an evangelical uh, Christian uh, relative who, um, during the time of the Ebola breakout, said, you know, the best thing that we could do is just wipe out Libya. I mean, he actually said that, and he truly meant it. So um, these are not people who have empathy or sympathy or critical thought. These are people that are, that are, they're okay with committing mass acts of genocide and ethnic cleansing on other nations. So that's what evangelicals are like. And, and yes, it's appalling and yes, it's, 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 it's all that, but, but you, but rather than be appalled and be, and be disgusted, why don't, you know, maybe, and, and then making fun of them for that, you know, understand that that's really what they think. As much as you and I believe in, in, in empathy and critical thought and communicating um, to each other and, and being responsible for our actions, as much as we know that that's the way to navigate throughout this world, politically, spiritually, socially, you know, and all that, they actually truly believe in the same level of belief in their core, core belief system. They actually believe that ethnic cleansing is something that God wants. You know, they actually believe it. It says it right in the Bible that Jesus is going to come down on a golden chariot and cleanse the earth. And so when Trump was out there in the front saying things like, I'm going to clean out the swamp, evangelicals 
perked their little ears up and said, oh, we're going to equate that with cleansing the earth. And so that's why so many of them support him, because he will he will hand out these little trigger comments and they will attach those trigger comments to their core belief system. So um, and, and he'll manipulate. Trump is not an evangelical Christian, but Trump sure does like their money. Betsy DeVos is worth, you know, almost a trillion dollars. And she paid him to have that seat of Secretary of Education. When everybody was going through their, their hearings and being questioned, and Bernie Sanders was like, so, do you have any experience in the educational field? And she's like, no, but Jesus, and I love children. You know, if you and I were in an interview and we said something like that, uh, the person interviewing us would, you know, would, would very calmly and very, like, uh, quietly take us by the arm and say, well, thank you very much for showing up. We appreciate your time. Bye-bye now. <laughs> you know, and be like, get this person out of my sight. Well, that's exactly what Betsy DeVos said to Bernie Sanders when he was grilling her. And you know that these hearings and things like that, they, they were, it was nothing more than kabuki theater to make us think that, you know, we have, a, we have due process and that we have a, a functioning democracy and that we have, you know, a, a, a checks and balances in our system, and we don't. We don't. Betsy DeVos paid a lot of money for that seat. She gave it to the Trump campaign, and it's hers. And that's that's the way it goes. So, um, the uh, so where was I? Back to so when when he says things like you know I'm going to clean out the swamp or I'm going to drain the swamp, they immediately attach that to what the Bible says about how. Uh, Jesus is going to come back during the end times and he's going to cleanse the earth. So evangelicals are absolutely, they absolutely, absolutely hate and despise Muslims. Um, because the Muslim belief system is very similar to the evangelical belief system, except that they don't believe that Jesus Christ is a direct descendant from God. They believe that he was just a prophet that spoke about, you know, good works. Uh, they don't place him as the, you know, high on the throne of, of um, spirituality or whatever. So, and it takes, and the Muslim belief, which is the, which is the number one religion in the globe, Christianity being the second. So it's, a, it's kind of like the Hatfields and the McCoys, you know, it's like, I'm better than you. No, I'm better than you. No, I'm better than you. And so there's this constant, you know, um, era long, millennial long, millennium long, you know, a, a fight between Christianity and Muslims. And so evangelicals absolutely despise Muslims to the core. Like they just, they, they just, when, when they look at that passage in the Bible that says, you know, that to cleanse the earth, they think of ethnically cleansing all Muslims off the planet. That's what they want to do. So for instance, when I was at this beautiful garden in Florida where my mother lives, we were walking around this gorgeous garden. And if you do live in Florida and you get an opportunity to go there, I highly suggest it. It's, it's, it's at the back end of this you know, little neighborhood, this little obsolete neighborhood. You would never know that there's this gorgeous garden that, that, that goes down into the sea. It's called Lou Gardens, L-E-U. I, I highly suggest going there if you're in like the Orlando area. But anyway, my mom and I went there one day and a family of Muslims uh, supplicated themselves and they took the position of, you know, face to the ground and hand to the ground. And they, they gave thanks to, to uh, you know, they, they were doing the prayer. You know, it was time for them to do their afternoon prayer. You know, they have like seven times a day that they pray. They wash their hands like multiple times during the day. They have, they're very ritualistic. Um, they're some of the cleanest people you'll ever meet. They, they, and they don't just wash their hands. They do like a full on, you know, spitz bath, like many, many times a day. So when my mom witnessed this, I've never seen, <laughs> I was like, wow, do you need a pill or something? She went into a complete rage. Of course it was controlled because, you know, she's, she's not going to go, you know, banana shit in front of a bunch of strangers, but her face turned red, you know, her hands turned into fists and she just said, you know, and she started speaking her own prayer. And it was a way to, like, 
and, and it was a and it was like taking out a weapon and shooting them you know her prayer she was going to pray the evangelical prayer and she was going to which meant that it was going to take away the the um effectiveness of their own prayer and I, I so i actually have witnessed this kind of behavior firsthand so i know of what i speak they absolutely hate muslims so so um that's another thing that you have to consider. So when you when you're in this country and and you see you know uh, Muslims being attacked and things like that, you can almost be for sure. You can almost 99% like know for a fact that some evangelical movement is behind that attack. Um, so what else? So when the rapture comes and it's the end times and you know this is and this is why and the nation of Israel will be one state this is why they're gunning so hard to have the nation of Israel be one state because they really want their rapture they really really want it do the Bessie, Betsy DeVos's or the Ben Carson's or the various other evangelicals that are sitting in our government right now do they want it no they don't they don't care about that but they're pandering to the ideology and the ideation that the evangelicals in our country actually believe they really, really want that rapture. And in order to get that rapture, according to the Bible, Israel has to be one state. So when the rapture happens, according to an evangelical, the Jews will automatically be sucked up into heaven. Even the ones that, you know, are, are running pedophile rings in Hollywood, you know. This is why they are, in so, are so embittered and hate them so much is because they don't want these these Jews who've li lived such you know corrupt decrepit lives on the planet to have to suddenly you know go up to heaven. That's not fair, <laughs> but that's according to the Bi their Bible and according to their ideation and belief system. That's actually going to happen. So every Jew will be sucked up into heaven, uh, and then every Christian that has said the prayer and allowed Jesus Christ into their heart and become a born again Christian, they will also be sucked up into heaven. And then people like me who consider ourselves um, Christians, but not, uh, not evangelical Christians or not Christian Zionists, we believe in the golden rule. Uh, we believe more in like, okay, let's use science and use a technology and use communication to make the world a better place. And yes, we do believe that, you know, I believe that, that Jesus Christ was more of a socialist uh, and that he was a threat to the establishment. He was a threat to the Roman Empire when his following got stronger and stronger and stronger. And the civilization where Christ was doing his sermons on the mount and things like that, they were actually starting to look towards each other and work out their own systems of governance outside of the Roman Empire. And that's why he died, because he was a threat to the establishment. Well, that's sort of the Jesus that I believe in. I believe in the one that's all about socialism and, and communing and, and, and looking towards each other and not necessarily looking towards the government. You know, the government is all about wealth and maintaining their wealth and getting more wealth, you know, at the cost of the American slave mentality and propagandized through the media and things like that. So the, those are the basic tenets that, that I as a Presbyterian believe in and it's very simple and to me it's it's the easiest thing in the world but to an evangelical Christian unfortunately when the rapture comes that means that I'm not going to get sucked up into heaven like they are and I'm going to have to stay on the earth and and live through torment and torture and I might have to take the sign of the devil and if I choose not to then my limbs are going to be pulled from my body and this horrific experience is going to happen and eventually my body will die but my soul will go to heaven. So, you know, either way, I, I go to heaven. It's just that by not being an evangelical Christian, I unfortunately will be stuck on the earth uh, having to go through, you know, uh, all of this torment that happens during the rapture. And then, uh, and then, so, and then there will be some that are left behind and they will be uh, the new the new era of, of, of the world. It will be the new world and they will, they will create a new world, the ones that are left behind. So the young, pure uh, Christians will be left behind to repopulate the earth and rebuild the earth and start over. And that's, that's basically evangelical belief system in a nutshell. That's really, um, 
that's really like how I grew up. That's the belief system that I was taught. Uh, and um, I think that we have a lot of people in this country that absolutely 100,000% believe in this belief system. Um, and there's a lot more of them than you might realize. Uh, there's a lot of them. And, they're, and some of them are in really high powerful positions. Uh, some of them are not. Uh, some of them come across as the nicest people on the planet, uh, and some of them have ulterior motives. Uh, so that's really all I have to say about it. Um, I hope this has been uh, educational for you, and I'll go ahead and um, turn the camera around so you can see. Uh, let's see if I can do it. Yeah, so you can see uh, the view of San Francisco. Have a good day.